Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. Today we're doing a lot of video analysis, so that's why I'm starting my introduction here in my office because uh, I did most of my work on the computer and you're gonna see a lot of comparisons and lines and so on. And what I want to show you is how we worked with Steven on his serve. So the short version is how did we improve his toss with field-based exercises, so his toss was low and I want to show you some field-based exercises on, on how to increase the toss. That's the short version. Uh, the long version is that we're going to take a look at his serve and analyze it in, in detail. We're going to take a look at the mental reasons. What are the reasons that he might be serving the way he is? Well, what is holding his serve back? And we're going to take a look at biomechanical reasons, so, so the physical reasons. And then once we have the whole picture, we can then prepare a plan on how to work on the surf. So let's get started. So let's take a look at Steven's surf so that we can better diagnose the problems. Since Steven is a medical doctor, we're going to do it his way. We're going to do, we're going to create a diagnosis and then a prescription of drills on how to work on his surf. So I'm going to run it now one time with me, with my surf. Now keep in mind these two clips are synchronized, so we're going to hit the serve at the same time. That's very important to know, we're going to hit the serve at the same time. So now just observe a little bit what's going on and then we're going to go more into details. So now let's go through this one more time and look at some key checkpoints. So the first one is the position of the racket when we release the ball. So this is my, I'm releasing the ball, you can see where my racket is. So that means I've covered quite a lot of ground with my backswing by the time I release the ball. Now you see Stevens where his racket is when he's releasing the ball, so he hasn't covered much ground with his backswing. And now he has to rush to get to the contact point. Now if he had a very high toss, that would have been possible. But now you can see that even his toss is lower than mine. And so now he, he's in a lot of trouble. Like his racket is falling behind and he has a very low toss. And the result of that is a very shallow drop. He's simply unable to execute the whole drop or the whole loop behind his back of the racket that actually accelerates the racket because he has no time. The next part we can take a look at is the what is the actual height of the toss above the contact point. So you can see I mark the length of my racket with the yellow line. So you can see that I'm tossing about one racket length above my contact point. And you can see in Steven's case that that's way less. And so, while it is possible to serve with a low ball toss, you must have a different rhythm of the serving. Typically players don't have a lagging arm. There are, of course, always exceptions, like maybe Ivo Karlovic is a player that has a low ball toss and he lags the hitting arm, but these are really exceptions. And, you know, as recreational tennis players, we should be looking for the most simple ways to serve and not the most complex ones. Because when you're looking at Karlovich's serve, then what he does is he tosses the ball very low and then he executes a very complex backswing movement in a very short amount of time. So that's difficult. So we should be looking for a serve that, that is simple for us and that gives us good consistency and placement. In order to properly diagnose the player and the cause of the current problems, we need to look at the mechanical reasons. So how's the biomechanics, in this case the throwing motion, and are there any physical limitations like a previous injury or or some injury hampering the player now or perhaps a lack of flexibility.
But then we also need to look at the mental or psychological reasons. Because in my experience, more than 50% of the technical mistakes are caused by a wrong belief or an incorrect mental image of the stroke. We cannot just correct the player mechanically as if they are robots that somehow got programmed incorrectly. In fact, most of the times the player executes the stroke incorrectly because that's how they see it in their mind's eye. And it's their mental image that's wrong and we need to find out where they got it wrong. Only when we correct the mental image of the stroke and the player actually sees the stroke correctly, only then can we correct their mechanics. Otherwise, they will always revert back to their original mental image. So to give you an example here in Steven's case, what was the incorrect belief and what was the mental image he was following? Uh, Steven heard so many times us coaches preach about being relaxed on the serve that he wanted to be as relaxed as possible and took it a bit too far. I discovered that when I was telling him to load up and coil and create some tension in his body when serving and then he said, but aren't we supposed to be very relaxed during the serve? And that's how I realized where he got it wrong, meaning taking the relaxation idea too far. And then I understood why his arm is just dangling down and why his left arm collapses immediately after the toss which then causes a very low toss and all the problems that follow. When we serve, we have to initially load and coil in order to store energy in our muscles, so almost nothing is relaxed in that stage except the hitting arm. We can start the serve relaxed, of course, but once we wind up, almost everything is coiled and loaded, which means there is some tension in the body. We then release this stored energy in an explosive manner by driving the legs up and uncoiling and letting the hitting arm follow and in the last bit of the serve we add the extra power with the pronation snap. And in terms of the mental image, Steven told me that he liked the serving style of Ivo Karlovic and Venus Williams who have the lagging hitting arm and copied their style not knowing that this type of serve is more complicated since the arms are not coordinated and since there is way less time to execute the serve well. So once I showed Steven the side-by-side -side video of him and me serving, he realized how much time he loses by keeping his hitting arm down in the initial phase of the serve. And when it comes to the physical or mechanical reasons for the incorrect serve, Steven told me that he had a shoulder surgery, which means that even though the shoulder may be healed now, he may still be unconsciously avoiding a stretch in the shoulder since there was so much pain in the shoulder in the past. And that includes pain of the injury and the pain after the surgery. So the brain tends to protect previously injured parts by not allowing a full range of motion in order to prevent another injury. And secondly, we tested his throwing motion and I saw that his arm motion was good, but that he was not engaging his body enough into the throw. So that means he will not find power for the serve in his body. So to recap, we now diagnose the causes of the lack of power on the serve, the shallow drop, and the cause for a low toss. So mental, believing that one has to be very relaxed in the serve which causes the dangling arm, and the tossing arm to collapse immediately after the ball release, which causes a low toss. And having a mental image of Ivo Karlovic serve, which again causes a dangling and lagging hitting arm. And the physical ones are the shoulder surgery that possibly prevents a stretch in the shoulder, and the biomechanics of the throwing motion is lacking body engagement and hence power. So now that you have a clear understanding of what holds Steven's serve back, we can start working on correcting the serve. The mental causes have been addressed now since Steven has seen the pros and cons of the lagging arm serve and is creating a new mental image of the serve. And he also understood that he needs to create tension and store energy in the preparation phase of the serve and not look for complete relaxation. Now we need to improve his throwing biomechanics and increase the height of his toss. And in the process we will also help him feel how to stretch the core muscles in his body, store energy and then release it.
When I zoom in a bit to see the difference in the beginning of the toss, you can see how much less of a swing Steven has than me. By not swinging back towards him, he doesn't bring any energy to the tossing arm and the tossing arm basically has to initiate the toss from zero speed. If the tossing arm starts the toss from a static position without any help of the swing of the body swaying in some way, then there's high chance of problems. The toss may be low or jerky and therefore inconsistent. So the first thing to keep in mind is to make the toss more dynamic. Steven needs to get a bit of a swing backwards and then initiate the toss. So one way to feel how to engage the body in the toss more is to look for a stretch in the front part of the body all the way from the left hip up to the armpit. Now if I just told Steven to toss higher, not much would have changed. In my experience, words don't work. We can't teach a sport where body needs to execute certain movements by talking to the person. We need to talk to the body directly through feel-based exercises as only then we can expect quick and noticeable changes. You can use two very simple exercises to stimulate and engage the tossing arm and also to engage the body to stretch more. The first one is to simply toss a heavier ball like this medicine ball that weighs around half kilo or one pound. If you don't have it, you can take a small bottle of water that weighs about the same and practice your toss with it. This extra weight will force you to engage more of your muscles to toss it higher. And tossing a tennis ball after some repetitions with this heavy ball will be much easier. The second drill you can do is to use an elastic band. Step on it and hold it in place and simulate the toss by stretching it up with your tossing arm. Overcoming the resistance of the band again stimulates the tossing arm and the side of the body underneath where Steven should feel a stretch. He can then later just rely on this feeling of a stretch and try to find it and he will get into the right position. Remember the final goal of instructions and corrections is always to go as soon as possible from thinking to feeling. And finally you can combine the stretch with the rubber band with the throw of a light medicine ball or just a shadow swing of the racket. The way I would work on the throwing motion and the general biomechanics of the serve is with the medicine ball and the back drill or by throwing old rackets. Since I've already made a video on this topic I will just briefly show you the drills we did with Steven. This drill helps the player synchronize the movements and create the speed of the ball and eventually the racket through a flowing fluid motion and not through jerky muscling of the ball. If you're a recreational tennis player and you struggle with your serve, then this is the most important exercise you should be doing. Please click the card above to find out more about this drill. Now I want to show you a part of the learning process that I call the battle. It is the battle between old and new movements, old and new motor programs in the brain. So let's return now to the ball toss drills for the left hand to show an example of this battle. The exercises with the medicine ball and the rubber band will help you overcome the old habits briefly, but do not expect that from now on you'll do the movement correctly. It will take quite some time now for you to battle it out with the old habits. This final clip with Steven is 5 minutes long as I want to show you the real struggle and the reality of battling a habit that has been forming for years. Do not believe in any instant tennis instruction that is being marketed to you. Changing a movement is an incredible battle and on day one of the battle you will mostly be losing. But once you know how to attack the old habits, and that's through feel-based exercises and not words, only then you'll be on the right track. And once you're on the right track, you can only get better. Toss. Toss. 
Just decide, uh, decide and toss the damn ball. Right. First five, then we'll do accuracy, but first five. Cross the damn ball. That's right. You see, you have to engage, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because normally you're, you're so used to this. You need to engage, you need to engage. You need to engage. Engage. Go. Two more. That's right, see now you were you were like this, right? Engage, cross the ball. Cross it. about the accuracy for just, just we need to wake up the left arm right too easy too easy yeah. need to go 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 Just get new five, just break the system. Break the system. Wom. 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 Okay, see, now it's better. If you watched all the way to the end, kudos to you, you're very motivated to learn and improve and that's the only way in tennis. In my opinion, it's the most difficult sport in the world and if you underestimate it, you will pay the price. Thanks for watching until the end, I'll see you in the next video.